Play is about to start in the final quarter of the 1961 Grand Final between Footscray and Hawthorne. Footscray trailing the Hawks by 27 points as Jeff Raymond and Reg Hickey take up the description. There goes the bounce of the ball for the fourth and final quarter and it's Cooper for Hawthorne who gets the tap down. Cooper rising very high there and a free kick is pulled out of the hat here going towards Footscray. Let's see who's taking it. It's not Spargo, no. Spargo, the centre man, I thought was taking it for a moment. He's not. Further back to the uh, Gillard of the half-back line who takes the ball, kicks it onto the half-forward uh, line for Footscray. Chance for Footscray here to come through, through McKellar. McKellar's kick is not a good one. It gets the ball, though, to centre half-forward. Hawthorne have a chance to clear here. Cooper came in, couldn't take the ball, and it's left to Slattery, working well out from goal to kick it down towards the full-forward position. Whitten goes high. He can't hold the ball. And Winnicky kicks it away for Hawthorne, out of bounds on the opposite side of the ground. Is now on the members' side of the ground, out of bounds about 30 yards around from the behind post for a throw-in. Schultz sets himself in the ruck but still can't get that tap down. Stead Hay knocks the ball out to where there's a chance for Law to pick up. He does so, sends it further downfield towards the centre wing position where Footscray are in through Spargo. Spargo's kick puts them down into attack again. A chance for them here. Oh, Duff, the new man who's on. Gardner has gone off. Duff couldn't hold that one. He's number 16 in there. Has yet to have a kick for the day. He's just came on, come on after half time. Schwab calls for the ball. Yes, Gardner, after taking a couple of knocks early there, finally Schultz does get the knockdown, sends it in the arms of Eon, Graham Eon. However, Hawthorne have got it away down towards the centre wing position and over the line and out of bounds. Footscray doing the attacking anyway, Reg. Oh, very much so, uh, Jeff. Uh, but I'm not, not getting too much result out at the moment. They've got a score to get any, anywhere near the finish of this game. I'm rather into trying to pick up who's roving. They're, they're roving Eon, I think. I think uh, uh, Graham Eon one, wants to be on the ball, Reg. That's the one, I think, yes. Look at the way Brendan Edwards. Edwards has got the ball. He's been doing so much damage for uh, Hawthorne there in the centre today. Only to see Charlie Evans get dumped. <laughs> it comes back into it again. There's Evans still playing the ball on in front of him. Picks it up, wearing a bandage on his right elbow, incidentally. Well, there's a chance for Mort to mark. He couldn't do so. And back to the centre wing position comes the ball. And over the line, I think, when that mark was taken. It was taken by Hay, but I think it might have been over the line. That's right, Jeff. It was yes, over the line. And the boundary umpire is getting the ball back. He looked to me as though he was just over the line when he grabbed the ball in. Now, on the throw-in. Hello, there's an infringement towards uh, against Schultz here, I think. Yes, and John Peck of Hawthorne will be taking it. Peck, who started off at full forward, is now rucking for the Hawks. And rucking mighty well, too, because Schultz has been almost shut out of the game. Graham Arthur gets caught in possession of the ball. Gary Young punches it along. It looked to be just over the line there. However, Gary Young got his hand to the ball, sent it along to where Ware picks the ball up, sends it back to <laughs> where Mort gets it and kicks it out of bounds. You get the impression here that Hawthorne are slightly coasting along a bit. Hoyle's in possession, sends it to Spargo. Spargo working well away from the centre of the ground, overruns the ball and lets Hawthorne in. His opponent comes in, Brendan Edwards. Brilliant with the ball, gets flattened after he'd kicked it, but not heavily. His kick goes out of bounds in front of Hoyle's. On the throw-in. It's Hill in front of Schultz, who gets the tap down. Oh, <laughs> Graham Arthur was underneath that one. There he is, picking himself up now. He's all right. Well, nearly all right. <laughs> I like that bit, Jeff. Nearly all right. <laughs> Further down towards the goals here. There's a chance for Hawthorne. No, I think there might be a ball up. No, he's no, found he's a free kick out of it. And it's going Footscray's way. It's being taken uh, by Evans. Yes, Evans taking the free kick in the back pocket. Four foots grey. Not a good kick, but it goes to Schultz. Oh, and Schultz has done that a lot. He dropped that one right onto his tummy, and he let it fall to the grass. Hawthorne trying to get into attack through Fisher, who passes backwards over his shoulder to Cunningham. Cunningham has a shot for goal, but it'll go out of bounds by the behind post. Little Cunningham uh, coming in today 
in place of Connell, who was injured for Hawthorne. I think Reg has done a pretty good job around the packs. Oh, very good, Jeff. I think they've had the bite around the packs. Both Hawthorne rows have outdone the Footscray rovers all day long, I think. Well, here's a further chance for Mort. Hawthorne through Mort. Mort couldn't get his boot to the ball. Cunningham still in there, gets pulled and pushed down to the ground. Footscray have a chance to clear here, but oh, a bit slow. And uh, Uren comes in, a nice hand pass across to Fisher to his opposite wingman, and Fisher's kick, a left footer, is actually going a little bit further away from goals. However, Law, Ian Law, the rover, no, he can't get his hands to it. There's a chance now for Brown. Brown gets caught in possession, and the kick will go against him. Footscray are out of trouble. Temporary Hoyles will take the kick. Jeff, it's very noticeable to me at the moment. I think both sides are feeling the pressure now, and the, the players steady down quite a bit to what it was in the, in the previous three quarters. I suppose yes. it's only natural, but they're yes, getting a bit Reg. tired. Well, it has been played at a cracking pace all day. Footscray have got the ball across the centre line, only to find MacArthur. John MacArthur at centre half back, sending on to Gary Young. Is it? It's Gary. Gary Young, who's taken the mark at centre half forward. Coming into the game a bit more now is Gary Young. In fact, he's had the better of Hoyles, I would say, Reds today. I think a little bit, Jeff. Yeah, just a wee bit. He only kicked straight. Look at that one. That's shocking. a shocking kick, isn't it? Very bad kick indeed. Hobbs was there. Hobbs is not making much pace, but he does take the hand pass to put his team out of trouble, getting the ball to the centre wing position. It's a great old struggle going on there, and it's uh, Cam McPherson who gets it across to Brendan Edwards. Brendan Edwards too strong, a little bit too fast. Down to Colin Uren. Uren down to the half-forward place. At the half-forward position, Schultz has the ball, can't get rid of it. Charlie Evans gets pulled when not in possession and will take a free kick, I think. Jeff, him getting the, up off the carpet on now. The day, he's been a rather solid little player back there, little Charlie, my oh, boy. You know? Yes, yes, I would say well. he's possibly been the pick of the back men today. I think so. In spite of those few fumbles very, very early in the match, he's been trying all the time. He's done a lot of work for Footscray in the uh, defence position. Well, there's his kick. It's a good one, too, to the centre of the ground, but one-handed the Footscray player flies. However, Footscray come out with it. It's down in their scoring zone. Now there's a chance to Slattery, who the redhead, oh, he slips over at the last minute, allows Kane to pick up the ball. Kane is hotly tackled by Stewart, but he gets his kick. And the ball is just about the centre wing, favouring Footscray territory very, very slightly. Yes, it's almost coming back now towards the half-forward flank position. Here's the throw-in. Winnicky's in there, so is Ware and John Peck. It's Winnicky who gets the tap down. Oh, look at Teddy looking for a place to pass mm. the ball to. Couldn't find anybody, and it's Uren clearing easily for Hawthorne. Down to the centre half forward position, a chance for Law. Law overruns the ball. Mort is in there. Still Hawthorne into attack here. Peck passes back. Picked up by Schultz. Schultz, a hand pass out of trouble. It's going across towards the boundary. And uh, there we see Brown. Picking up, sending it back to the goal square again where Footscray should clear through the agency of Lee. Have done so towards the uh, stand wing. And on the stand wing now we see some Fisher picking up and getting rolled. In possession of the ball, says the umpire, so the kick will go to Bryant, his wing opponent of Footscray. That's Bryant on his lonesome there, looking for a short pass, a lead, and he's got it too. The ball being taken by Graham Ian, who was roving a while back, and looks as though he might have gone back on the half-forward line now. Perhaps the flank, because Cam McPherson's on it. Marked by Winnicky, not allowed, says the umpire. Goes out to where Stead Hay picks it up. He can't get rid of it. Trying to come through with sheer face is Fargo. Runs near the boundary line, but not over. Takes his kick, says Fargo. Here's a chance for Footscray to get another goal here with a mark in front of the pack. A kick off the ground by Slattery. And it's Cooper... Or Hill, Cooper, who relieves for Hawthorne. Footscray, another chance here through Quarrel. Quarrel's left foot kick, though, goes over the line and out of bounds. Well, Reds, they just can't get it down to those goals. No, Jeff, it appears to me that uh, generally all round Hawthorne are the stronger side now, and they are tackling Footscray at every attempt they get the ball, and I think uh, will win this game. Look at the dash of that boy going in just now. Between the three Hawthorne to your end, he's coming up the centre of the ground now with a nice long punt. Up to centre half forward position is going to be up to Charlie, my boy Evans, to hold on. Well, there's Charlie Evans, firm in defence as usual, and Uren, my word, what a great game he's playing, Mike. 
He certainly is, Jeff. Uh, there's the ball down into the centre now. Footscray, as you can see, they're, they're fumbling. Uh, their players just uh, don't seem to be able to hold those marks. Even Hobbs then I uh, wasn't too sure about that one. However, he plays on when the mark has been taken by Duff. Gives Footscray a great chance to score here. Boy, they need about four quick ones. Duff is about uh, 30 yards out, almost in front. There's his kick off the side of the boot, and one point only is the result. Well, it looks as though uh, Bert Deacon, shortly, uh, congratulations will be in order for the Hawks. However, we'd like to uh, take this opportunity of congratulating our director, Alf Potter. I'm sure all of you uh, watching this uh, telecast at home uh, have enjoyed the uh, pictures you've seen. Uh, they're the result of the great work done by our cameramen and our crew here, and especially the work of our uh, director, Alf Potter. There's Killer Kane kicking out now, right to the center of the ground. Up they go. Ed Edwards almost pulled that one down. However, it's on the ground. A chance for Bryant here. Gets his foot to it, sends it to the center half forward position. Oh, virtually nobody home for Footscray. That gives a MacArthur a chance to tear through there. It's all Hawthorne, as you can see. However, out it comes to Footscray now. It's uh, Ian who uh, kicks the ball down to the half forward flank, over the line and out of bounds. There's a throw in. Oh, Footscray, where missed that badly? However, it's on the ground. It's picked up now by uh, Fisher. Fisher drives it up towards Hawthorne's half forward flank. Schultz gets his hand to it over uh, Graham Arthur, puts it over the boundary line. Once again, Herb has the opportunity of uh, throwing in. There's the throw in. Up they go. Witness in the ruck for Footscray. Gets it down. Uh, Ian, not quick enough to get to the ball. And it goes out once again. It's on Hawthorne's half forward flank. <coughs> there, there you can see, you probably saw then the pattern of the game. One fellow looking after Schultz and uh, the other fellow going for the knockout. Makes it very, very hard for any ruckman. But John Schultz is struggling on. Uh, good tactics by uh, Hawthorne. In comes Schultz again. That time he almost got it. Went down heavily. The ball's up to the uh, forward position for Hawthorne, and the mark has been pulled down there by Hill. Hill drives towards the teeth of goals. They set themselves up. They go. No mark pulled down. Hawthorne still uh, trundling it on. Bernie Lee jumps on, on top of his opponent there. Hoyles is in there also. Let's see what umpire Frank Swab is going to do with it. I'll have a bounce, chaps, he says. There's the bounce of the ball. Graham Arthur gets it. Comes down now where the kick is taken and... One point only. Hawthorne Bugler, you've probably read about him. He's having a great time here. Hawthorne, 9-16, Footscray, 6-7. Well, it looks like a miracle is needed, Bert. They couldn't possibly pull it out, Mike. Not the way the game's going at the moment. Hawthorne's right on top. Every department, there's uh, 13 minutes more to go, and uh, they're well on top, Hawthorne. No fears. 13 minutes actually gone, Bert. Uh, yes, there might only be 13 minutes to go, too. Well, there's the ball in the centre of the ground now. Hawthorne into attack once again. Winnicky uh, puts a funny old left foot to it. Up it goes. It's punched away there by uh, Charlie Evans. Down on the ground again. Hawthorne, too strong. Morton Brown gets his boot to it. Sends it to the teeth of goals. Up they go. No mark pull down. Footscray has the opportunity to clear here through uh, Barry Ian. Comes around, he bounces the ball once, twice. Eventually puts his left foot to it. Drives it down to the wing position. There's a great race going on here between McKellar and uh, Stead Hay. But the ball beats them both. There's a throw in. Teddy Whitten in there for Footscray, gets a knockdown too, to uh, McKellar. Oh, he's met by just about everybody you could imagine. A real reception committee was awaiting him as he came out with that ball. And uh, eventually he'll take his kick. Boy, well, he met some opposition with that one. He's on the wing position on the member's side of the ground. Here's his kick. Down to the, towards the forward pocket. 
Nobody able to mark. It's on the ground. Law comes in in defence for Hawthorne. Drives to the wing position. The mark is taken there by Spargo. Spargo handballs across very quickly to Barry Ian. Ian gets his kick down to the centre half forward position. Everybody has a chop at it. Nobody gets it. It's on the ground. Players going in. And eventually the free kick has been given to Charlie Stewart, the 19th man for Footscray, who came on. Footscray have lost two players, Beamish and Gardner. Stewart's kick, it's a drop kick, it's a high one, doesn't cover a great deal of distance, however, it's uh, right down into the forward zone. But Hawthorne drive them out once again to the half-forward flank. Here's a chance now for uh, Bryant. He handballs across. Duff has it. Duff is trying to punch it across to Stewart. Can't do so. And eventually, it's Cam McPherson who drives the hawk at, Hawks out of danger to see uh, Morton Brown marked there on the wing position on the outer side of the ground. Hawthorne into attack once again. Yuren has it, running up on the half-forward flank, driving down towards the forward pocket where the mark is spilled by Hill there. However, Footscray clearing now. Here's a chance for Fisher. Fisher picks up, drives right into the teeth of goal, and the mark is taken effortlessly by John Peck, the vice-captain, full forward come Ruckman. Oh, goodness gracious me. Well, Third. Mike, uh, there's an amazing thing. It is a goal. Now it is a goal. It looked like as if it, uh, it only made a point. I'm terribly surprised about that. It looked, as, looked to go off the side of his boot, but obviously no, and it's a goal. Well, I think 100,000 people also thought it was a, um, a behind. You could hear the, uh, the silence, if, uh, if I may use the term, that uh, came over the ground because I think that everybody thought that he'd kicked a point. When I said, goodness gracious me, I remember labelling him to kick a goal earlier in the match and he <laughs> went he off did, the side of his boot. exactly that, Mike. Yes, interesting to note, too, that people are starting to stream off the ground, even at this early period. Well, here, viewers can uh, see history being made. Hawthorne well on the way to their first premiership ever. However, the Bulldogs are still in it. They're going down fighting. Into attack again. Witten sets himself, flies high, but uh, cannot take it. The judgment just wasn't there. Hawthorne clearing now. Plenty of Footscray fellas down there, but they can't do much with it. And the free kick goes Hawthorne's way to uh, John Winnicky. Winnicky there, almost on the half-back flank on the outer side of the ground. His kick, he must be pretty tired. It would uh, cover about 60 yards, 30 up and 30 down. The mark has been taken for Footscray out there on the half-forward flank on the outer side of the ground. Puts Gray back into attack. Right into the teeth, this one goes. Oh, Witten is swamped by Hawthorne opponents then. The ball is on the ground. It's picked up by uh, Cunningham, it looks like. Cunningham drives out of danger. Two Footscray fellas fly for it, but eventually it must be Ware who will take the uh, mark. Ware just wide of the centre, looking for uh, Hobbs. Hobbs takes the mark. Hobbs is running into a to go for them and it's it's through it's through for Footscray 18 minutes of this quarter have gone there's the scoreboard 10-16 to 7-7 10-16 to 7-7 well I want to rattle on about four quickies bird to be in it uh, it'd be a miracle Mike I don't think I don't think they can do it but uh, of course it's not over yet until the final siren is run <laughs> there's the bounce of the ball now Schultz gets the knockdown. However, it goes straight to Cooper. Cooper gets his boot to it, sends it up towards the half-forward flank. In they come now. Morton Brown gets it. Left foots it up to the uh, goal mouth. Mark not pulled down by Bernie Lee. Charlie Evans chips in and drives uh, Hawthorne out of the danger zone. The ball is on the uh, half-forward flank for Hawthorne on the outer side of the ground. Looks as if... Uh, the 19th man for Hawthorne is coming on. John Kennedy must think that it's he's got it one or perhaps somebody's injured. However, another goal to Hawthorne through Ian Moore. Screwed around on his left foot and popped it through. Just trying to put, there's the scoreboard. Just trying to pick out who is going off for, uh, for Hawthorne. The 19th man is on, that is Nolder. What a 19th man to have, Bert. He's a beauty. 
He's a beauty, all right, going around There's the outside. There's Nolder going. He just saw a glimpse of him then going around the outside. And he's going to replace Cunningham. Cunningham is going off. Well, Footscray uh, not giving in. There's Hobbs with the ball in the centre of the ground. Drives it down to the centre half forward position. Whitten flies high. Just can't hold it. However, Slattery is the one who takes that mark. Nah. Slattery's a fair distance out. He'd be 50 yards out from goal. Here he comes. There's his kick. Got the distance, not the direction. One point only is the result. Well, there's the scoreboard. I think the scoreboard tells the story. Fourth one, had they kicked straight, it would have been uh, a lot further in front. But uh, they haven't, and here is Killer Kane to take the kickoff. There's his kick to the outer side of the ground as Jeff Raymond and Reg Hickey resume the description. Well, we said beforehand that we weren't going to uh, nominate unless the scores were pretty uh, discrepant who was going to be the winner, but at this stage I think we can safely say that uh, Hawthorne have got themselves a premiership. Right, Alf? Yes, Alf Potter, our director, says we can nominate now, so... Well, Gentlemen, Jeff, Hawthorne have got themselves a premiership, eh? I'd like to be sure of that a little. Yeah. Well, all congratulations to them, John Kennedy and the boys. There's uh, Footscray still uh, battling on, but uh, without any purpose at all. And uh, <laughs> they're being kept well out of trouble there by Stead Hay. Now, the throw-in to take place on the half-forward flank. Footscray attacking zone. Over his head, but Fisher comes out with the ball for... Oh, dear, dear, dear. Teddy Whitten went down then very solidly after Nalda, who'd just come on. Nalda has come on so that he could have a bit of a show. Teddy Whitten got the free kick, passed it across, a hand pass to Bryant, and I reckon Bryant's gone for holding the ball. No. Whether umpire Schwab at a case like this is being a bit lenient on him, I don't know, Reg, but he looked as though he was gone then. I thought so, Jeff, too. Yeah. Peck's in there for Hawthorne. He gets the tap down. Comes out. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful football. Very, very clever football on the part of Hawthorne, who are doing what they like in these closing stages of the game. Even Hoyles there didn't quite know what to do. Where comes around with a trial. Look at this. Look at this inept football on the part of four foot straight. Where they did everything right last week, they can't do a thing right this week. Well, Jeffy, I think they've been bustled by a far better and more intelligent side at the moment. Yes. That handball down along the ground here is beautiful. That yes, we mustn't say that Footscray have lost it because Hawthorne have actually won it. Their That's football correct. has been strong and on occasions brilliant. But I think strength is the keynote to their success, Reg. Very much. And a lot of intelligence, Jeff, I think. A lot of intelligence. Now, yes. You've seen fellas tap the ball down along the ground here. To... Oh, yes, Alf, there's, there's some paper dropping across your screen. Yes. There's coming down from upstairs. Some of the boys upstairs, Footscray people, turning up their flags, perhaps, or something like that. That was John MacArthur relieving for Hawthorne, getting it down to Colin Nuren. Nuren further downfield for Hawthorne. Still, they're attacking. They reckon they haven't got enough on the board yet. Down into the full forward position where there's a chance for Law. Law couldn't mark the ball, and Footscray have cleared it back, only to see Uren in control again. Uren underruns it, but he'll pick it up again. I think he's got time to turn around, recover turn out of trouble, get his left foot to the ball, put it right onto the half-forward flank for Hawthorne. Three Hawthorne players there, one of them must get it. It'll be a kick for goal, and it could go through again for another goal, and it has! Nelda! What a handy player this is, Reg, to have coming on oh, as your 19th man. He's a handy boy and a 19th man, Jeff. He could be in my side any time, this chap, but still, that's just how strong Hawthorne are at the moment. <laughs> now, they bring on, uh, those running around the boundary, Phil Hay, whom I think Hawthorne will deserve to give a run on the ball because he's been a very great 19th or 20th man. Yes, uh, there he is. There he is now. He's just waiting to go on. Who's going to come off for Hawthorne? Academic interest only in the football now as to how much uh, Hawthorne will win by. Brendan Edwards, who's been brilliant all day, gets the ball out onto the wing. However, Footscray could go into attack here through the person of Hoyles, their centre-half back. However, it's out of bounds. Both 19th and 20th were on at the start of this quarter for, uh, for Footscray. And now Hill, it looks as though Hill has come off for Hawthorne. And Hay has gone on. That's P. Hay, not St uh, Stead Hay, has been on since the start of the match. 
Well, Footscray is still going in hard. That's Bryant, number 37, with the ball. Getting it across to Teddy Whitten. Teddy Whitten unopposed. It looks for a short pass, which comes on. Oh, no, Graham Ian caught at centre-half forward. Hurled to the ground, and the kick must go to Hawthorne, and is. John MacArthur. He's been a star with Jeff, hasn't oh, he? Oh, he's played a wonderful game. He uh, did pretty well on noughts and crosses once, too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> as a contestant, Reg. Yes, he's a... He's a well, there's time on only to play. 25 minutes have gone. That's Bob Weir. We can see number four getting a free kick for Footscray. Ball comes back to him now. There's Weir's kick to the centre wing position. Fisher has a chance here for Hawthorne to put them into attack again. Gets his foot to the ball, sends it down to the full forward zone. Weir can't mark it. And coming out is Hay for... Uh, the 20th man for Hawthorne gets caught in possession of the ball, but hand passes it across very well to Gary Young to see it go straight down the throat. Let's see who this is. That's centre-half forward. Brown. Brown's come in from the flank. He's waving his arms about there, everything not to his satisfaction. Charlie Evans may be encroaching a bit on his mark. There's Brown's kick, and it's through for another goal to Hawthorne. Well, there are the scores on the board. 13-16, Hawthorne, Footscray, 7-8. Uh, thanks very much, Red Hickey. It's been fun <laughs> working with you. I think I'll give it away now. Mike, Mike Williamson, take it. <laughs> I see. Right. Well, uh, as Jeff pointed out... Um, That's who I was barracking for. <laughs> it's all over by the shouting. And um, the Bulldogs are still trying hard to, uh, well, salvage what they can out of it but even the luck of the, the uh, game was going against them. The free kick will go to uh, Stead Hay there on the half-back flank. Stead uh, puts the Hawks into attack again. John Schultz fails to mark. A great power in the first half, Schultz, but uh, uh, the, um, the backroom boys of Hawthorne found the answer to him in the second half. There is John now, gets the ball, drives it up towards the centre-half forward position, Nobody able to gain possession. Whitten comes in hard there. Through comes Duff for Footscray. He's uh, trying. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of um, dissension uh, further back between uh, uh, two players. Not very matey at all, actually, Bert. <laughs> Not too matey, but who would be now? After all, I that's I'm right alongside around, you. Yeah. I sneaked in. There right you. now, into attack once again comes Hawthorne. They're not letting up one iota. They're going to make a real bird of this premiership. Johnny Hoyles clears for the Bulldogs down to the half forward flank. A little wrestle going on and it looks like Colin Yuren will take the, uh, the kick. Colin Yuren uh, just uh, about in the centre of the ground. A little wide of the centre, favouring the outer side. There's his kick, right up towards where Teddy Whitten has the chance to mark. Now he spills that one. Teddy uh, flick pass to uh, Bobby Ware. Ware clears towards the outer side of the ground. Oh, hello, uh, Quarrel uh, dropped that one. Quarrel's been uh, very quiet in the second half. Don't you think, Bert? Very quiet, John Quarrel. Oh, yeah, John Quarrel's been very quiet, Mike. Uh, the whole... Footscray side's been a bit quiet since half time, of course. Hawthorne hasn't given them one chance. Well, the uh, brilliant Footscray, the speed that we saw in the first half is missing. If you'll uh, remember back to the first half, uh, uh, no doubt you were amazed and delighted with Footscray's football, but since half time, it's been non existent. There is Slattery pulling down a lovely mark might for be, Footscray. Might be a bit far for him, Mike, this one, I think. Could be now. He'd be pretty weary by now. He's about 40 yards out from goal. Coming in now to take his kick. It's got the distance, all right, but one point only is the result. Well, as I said earlier, history, you can see the scoreboard, the historic scoreboard here at the MCG, Hawthorne's first premiership flag coming up. They've been playing uh, just over 29 minutes in this quarter. So Hawthorne, you can uh, start deciding where to put that flag out there at uh, Glen Ferry Oval. 
There's a mark taken for Footscray on the half-back flank. Umpire Swab isn't going to pay it by the look of things. Let's see what he's going to do. He uh, decides a ball up. There's the ball. Uh, the wren comes in. There's the final siren. The final siren. And Hawthorne are premiers for the year 1961. The first premiership for Hawthorne. Congratulations to them from all sporting fans. There is the scoreboard. Hawthorne, 13-16-94. Footscray, 7-9-51. The umpire was Frank Swab. Repeating the scoreboard. Hawthorne, 13-16-94. Footscray, 7-9-51. A great and meritorious victory to John Kennedy and his boys. You can see the lads congratulating each other. I'd like to take this opportunity of congratulating our commentators, Jeff Raymond, Bert Deacon, former Carlton Brownlow medalist, Reg Hickey, former captain and coach of Geelong, and our director, Alf Potter, all the boys here on the cameras who have done a magnificent job this afternoon. We thank you for your attention, and now on behalf of everybody here, this is Michael Williamson saying good afternoon to you all.